Hi guys, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So these radios don't use repeaters, they don't use HF, VHF, or UHF, and they don't even technically use radio in the way most hams think about. So today in this video, we're gonna talk about POC radios. That's push to talk over cellular. Now, if you're a ham radio operator, you might already be thinking, well, that's not real radio. And honestly, well, that's a fair reaction. But POC radios are literally everywhere now. So in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about what POC radios are, who benefits from them, and then I'll show you a few different POC radios that I've got here, and I'll show you them working. So first off, what is a POC radio? Well, at its core, a POC radio works a bit like this. Instead of transmitting RF directly over the air, it uses mobile data. 4G, 5G, LTE, and some even can connect to a Wi-Fi connection. So the elephant in the room here is POC radios. They're not there to replace amateur radio. They do not work without an infrastructure, and they do not function during network outages. For example, the internet goes down or your cell service disappears. Also, you can't experiment with antennas, you can't build repeaters, and you don't study propagation with these because, well, it's just irrelevant. So no, it's not a replacement for ham radio, but they are incredibly useful in situation where licensing is impractical. Coverage needs to be instant and nationwide and reliability matters more than experimentation. So there is a use for them. So who uses POC radios? Well, I guess you can talk about security teams, construction sites, warehouses, taxis and delivery services, events and festivals, outdoor activities, even businesses with staff spread across different regions. Now, the benefits to POC radio is the fact that there's no repeater set up. There's no frequency coordination that you have to get allocated. There's no interference. And technically, well, there's no radio licenses required in most regions. You literally just turn them on and they just work. Now I've got a few radios here that I'm gonna show you. I've got the Kuangsheng IPQ1, I've got the Kuangsheng IPM5, I've got the Radtel P8, the TID radio TDM15, and the Talkport N39+. Plus. Now all of these are working, I've got them logged in and registered, but they do work in different ways. So POC radios are locked to what we call ecosystems, and some use manufacture cloud platforms or dealer managed servers or subscription based services. Now that means all POC radios do not talk to each other. Programming experience varies massively depending on what system you're gonna use and some actually require some admin access. On some of these radios that I'll be showing you, I can add users and groups myself. On some of the others, I can't and it has to be done by the dealer or the manufacturer. And that's something that you really need to consider when you're buying them. Okay, so let's start going through each of these POC radios that I've got here. The first POC radio I have here is the Kuangsheng IPM5. Now they come as a pair for around £80. Now they come with SIM cards already installed and when you order them, just make sure that you choose the correct version. I believe there's a European version and a US version. Now when you first power them on, the SIMs will activate and I believe you get 12 months of free data. However, just check that before purchasing if you get these ones. The IPM5 outer shell is actually made from plastic, definitely the cheaper feeling POC radio out of the ones that I'm gonna show you in this video. Now there's a PTT button down the left side with a couple of function buttons, which appear not to do anything. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Down the right side, there's USB-C socket, which is used for charger and a Kenwood style speaker mic socket. The screen is a little small on this device and to navigate through the menus, you use the buttons located on the front. Now there is a menu that you can go into and change groups or direct dial a contact. However, these do come pre-programmed to only work with each other, i.e. the two radios that came in the same pack. Now, if you wanted to add more devices to the same group, then you have to contact the supplier who will do this for you. And I believe there's actually a cost involved in that. 
There are some other limited choices in the menu, like changing the screen's theme and turning off the beeps and so forth. Now, specs say that the IPM5 runs free RTOS operating system, and it also includes AI noise reduction. If we take out that 300 milliamp hour battery, you'll notice the little hidden compartment where the micro SIM card is installed. Now, once this data runs out, I think it's probably easier to use your own SIMs from a local supplier, as I could not find any way to top these up or change the subscription online. Now, the next radio I have here is called IPQ1. Again, this is made by Kuangsheng. Now, this radio feels a lot nicer in the hand, a lot more professional. It costs around £10 more than the previous model that I showed you, and it also comes with SIM cards installed, which, when powered on, seems to activate. They will have the same issues where they are tied to each other initially, but if you have more than two, then you can contact the supplier who will add more groups and more devices into those groups for you. Obviously, that's going to cost as well. Now, the screen is a lot nicer on this model. It's larger and easier to read. The top rotary control is used to change output volume and will also allow you to change menu items. Now the chassis on the IPQ1 is metal, which makes it feel a little bit more rugged than that M5 model did, considering that was just plastic. Down the right side, there's a speaker mic socket and a USB-C socket for charging the battery. Down the left side, the PTT and two function buttons. However, when tapped, they appear not to be assigned to a function, but if you hold the top one in, it will just activate mute. There doesn't appear to be anywhere in the menus where you can actually change the function of these function buttons. And on the top, it's just the antenna and the rotary control. Within the menu, you'll find the groups list and users list, but as mentioned before, there will only be one group and one other device in the list, and that's the other device that came in the same pack. You can change themes, turn off beeps, and even change the menu from an icon-based menu to a list detail type menu. Of course, you can enable things like power saving, adjust backlight, and all the usual good things. One of the interesting settings is the ability to change SIM. The Q1 can have two SIM cards at the same time. Now, this can be useful if you're venturing into areas where coverage is better on one network than another. The Q1 can also switch automatically between these SIMs to make life easier. The battery on this device has a 2500 milliamp hour capacity, and it kind of reminds me of those old mobile phones where batteries were removable. Now, under the battery is, of course, where you're going to find those SIM cards. OK, so moving on to the next radio, and this is the Radtel P8. Now, this is where things start to get interesting. Now, the usual price for a pack of two is around $160 but I think there's some special promotions going on at the time of making this video where you can get a pack of two for around $100. If you choose the option to receive a SIM card in each, then you get one years of free data per device. And then after that, it's $20 per year. That's 12 months of data, or I think it's around 800 megabytes per year per device. Speaker mic socket is available down the right side of the radio, but USB charging is done directly on the bottom of the removable battery, not on the radio itself. There's a PTT button and two function buttons down the left side, but again, you can't control or change the function of those function buttons within the radio. The Redtail P8 has a really nice feel to it. It's proper weighty and has a solid feel. It also looks kind of cool in my opinion. Now the display is nice and large with a decent size font. Now the screen shows the connected group, the device name on the network, LTE access status, and when someone talks, their user details are shown on the screen. One, two, three, one, two, three. Now that's the same as the other POC radios I showed before. When somebody talks, then their device ID or device name will show on the screen to help you identify who's talking. There's also a settings page in the menu where you can style the P8 to your liking with screen adjustments and tone adjustments too. The way it gets interesting with the P8 devices is that when you purchase a pair of them, they will be included in the same POC global sub account. You should get provided login details for your sub account. And within this POC global account, you can create or edit groups, rename devices and assign devices to certain groups. However, if you want to add more devices to the same sub account, 
then you have to contact Redtail to do this for you. Access to the POC global site is free forever. The only cost is the data SIM cards, but as mentioned before, you do get that one year free. Now, I'm not sure how easy it is to contact Radtail to add more devices to the same sub account, but after speaking with their tech support, it should just be the case of providing them with a new device IDs to add to your sub account. Now, once those devices are added to your sub account, you can rename them and assign them to every group you want. Now, I say group, but I guess you could also call them channels. There's lots of other settings within the POC Global website where you can even mute users, limit the transmission time per group, and look at historical data if enabled and available. So the Radtel PA with POC Global integration is a step closer to fully user-managed POC radios, but we're not done yet. Now I'll briefly talk about two further devices, and these are geared more towards ham radio users, but the first one is this TalkPort N39+. Plus. This uses a system called Linkpoon, I believe, and it's essentially a network radio app that runs on these devices. And it tries to mimic a VHF or UHF transceiver by having the network radio channels as frequencies. There are lots of information on these out there, and I did make a dedicated video on this product. If you want to check it out, you can even just download the app onto a mobile device and you can access the same channels as the N39 does without actually having the radio. The next is the Imrico T320, quite an old network radio, and there are newer models out there now. However, what is different about these devices is that they run Android. This means you can load whatever type of PTT application you want to on them, such as TeamSpeak, Zello, Echolink, Droidstar, and all sorts of other PTT apps that require a ham license. Also, certain devices won't work over cellular, they'll only work over Wi-Fi. So not strictly POC radios, but still come under that network radio category. Now, I think I've saved the best for last, in my opinion, and out of the devices I have here. Now, these are the TID or TID Radio TDM15 devices. Now, they cost around $60 each, but you can purchase them in packs where you can actually get massive discounts. Test one, two, three. 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 Upon activation, which we'll talk about in a moment, you get a 365 day data plan free at no extra cost. After the first year, it's $20 per year for more data, but of course you can use your own SIM cards if you want to. Now taking a look around the hardware, the M15 has a quite nice display. In my opinion, the size is perfect and it's easily readable. PTT and function buttons down the left side and down the right side, there's a speaker mic socket. Battery charging is performed using the USB-C socket on the bottom of the removable battery. Now on the top, there's a status LED next to that cell antenna and a little engraving saying GPS. But so far, I've not been able to confirm if there's actually a GPS receiver built in as there does not appear to be any options to enable this or view GPS data on the device or within the control app. Now the menu system allows you to change some parameters of how the radio works. It does have text to speech turned on as default, but this can get a little annoying, so you can turn it off. Although this could be useful for visually impaired users. Removing that 3000 mAh rechargeable battery will gain access to the SIM card slots just under the little plastic flap there. Now, with this whole ecosystem, you're actually in control. You can add and remove M15 devices and some other possibly compatible devices to the network as you like. All you need is the OD or Odd Master app on your mobile device. When the M15 powers up for the first time, it will show a QR code on the screen. Within the Odd Master application, you select Add POC device, scan the QR code, and then that device is added to your account. From the app, you can then create groups or channels, edit device names, and assign groups to each device. In fact, there are also hundreds of public groups that you can also search for within the app and assign to your devices. And yep, you can make your own created groups private so only trusted users can join it. If you are the admin for these devices, you can also use the app on your mobile device to talk to the devices over the network just using the speaker or microphone on your mobile device. And that's kind of handy if you have two devices you want to hand out to friends, but if you still want to be able to communicate through them, 
Within those groups, you can just use the app. If the device has more than one group assigned to it, you can actually go through the groups in the menu. You can also direct call other devices too by their username or device name, even a direct call to the mobile admin device is possible. One other cool feature is that within the Oddmaster application, you can enter into a group and then replay any message that has been sent via any device that was connected to that group. This means you will never miss a message if you're an admin or if you're a user with this app and part of that group. Now, I think that's a pretty cool feature. Well, there we go. An overview of what POC Radio is and a handful of devices to choose from. Now, there are hundreds of devices on the market and this is only a small selection. But when purchasing, just make sure to check which server they're connected to and how easy it is to manage the account if you want to or need to add more than two devices that's going to talk on that same group or channel. Of course, a lot of ham radio users would have started watching this video and most likely not been interested in it. But just remember that these are not here to replace ham radio. In fact, they're nothing to do with ham radio whatsoever. The only real reason POC radios have bridged over to ham radio is where some network admins have crossed network radios into real RF systems, which of course you need a license for. If you're about to type a comment and say these would be useless if they hit the fan and we had power cuts or network outages, then of course, that's a no-brainer. These aren't designed to replace normal RF transceivers in an emergency situation. Anyway guys, thanks so much for watching. I'm going to get my popcorn and sit and watch the comments. Take care. See you in the next one.